Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this week's instalment of my floss tube cross stitching progress. Um, I would like to welcome uh, everyone who is watching, new newcomers and repeat offenders if you like, in the nicest possible way. Um, I have two projects to share today and um, some books and I'll do those at the end so I'll let you know and those of you that aren't interested can um, turn off after the cross stitching. Um, I, looking in the screen it, because of the glariness it doesn't look like it but I've just been in the garden and my cheeks are very hot, possibly red but I, it doesn't look like it in the screen so if I look a little flushed it's because I have been uh, digging out plants and if you follow me on Instagram which is the same name as this you will have seen I have posted already uh, a photo of my furry assistant not being very helpful um, so yes anyway okay so we have last week I started the third round of my rotation so I am on day three of Hawk of four for Hawk Run Holiday, Hawk Run Hollow. Um, and probably, I haven't stitched it all yet today, I'm hoping to do a little bit this afternoon, um, but uh, yeah, try. I'm really trying this month to stitch every day, even if it's just a length of thread. Um, I'm noticing as the months go on, even though this is only the fifth month, but March and April, um, I missed a good 10 days of stitching in each month which isn't a big deal but if I want to try and get all these projects finished um, I need to at least try and do something every day uh, anyway okay so this past week I have worked on um, Orchard Valley Quilting Bee a little house needleworks and I am, what I showed you last week because I did a I did a where were we now with all the my projects. So I have completed that square, that whole square rectangle, uh, the tree here and I have started the roof of the house. Okay, so I have finished that square. There it is there. Um, and actually, even though I've got this folded over a little bit, I am now actually a quarter of the way through because this square up here, rectangle, is technically two squares. So if you oops, were to chop it in half and put it down here, I'm a quarter of the way through. What's going on here? So, so now I will start on the quilt in the big in the um, centre. I'll do the the corner that fills in this bit. That will be the next bit. When it comes up in the rotation again so that's looking good the whole thing if i can do it without too much glare so that's how it's looking so far so really pleased with that um, hope to get this one finished this year is one of my goals then project two in my rotation is the village of Hawk Run Hollow and and still in block one. Um, when I showed this last week, I have got all the wording done. I've got the big plants up here, and I've I had sort of from about where my finger is across the stream and the um, grassy bank. Can't think. So I have moved further along, um, so I've basically done all of this in here, there's a little fishy, some more plants. So there's only just a little bit in here now to do and finishing off the border. Um, what I might try and do this afternoon, because I really don't feel like stitching, is just work on the border. Um, just bring this along further here and bring this down a bit more and then at least... Um, I've done something and then tomorrow I'll have a really good push and try and get this block finished uh, and if it doesn't happen tomorrow um, then it will happen in the um, free slot days which is sometime towards the end of next week so 
There we go. Block one. Almost there. Okay. At five minutes, <laughs> that is all my stitchy stuff. I've got no haul. Um, I have got a parcel on its way. Uh, so hopefully by next week, next Monday, I should have it. Um, so, oh, excuse me. Still suffering a bit from coughing. I've just had a cough lolly. Ah, now, I will text you, Nicola, but if you're actually watching, 3787 from 20 years ago. So I do have it. Um, what we now need to do is see if it um, matches your, pro your project. So I'll keep that aside, and as I say, I'll send you a text afterwards. Um, I'm enjoying watching everybody's plans for Stitch Mania and then those that are now starting to show their progress is really cool too. I do think next year I might give it a go. Um, I'll see how this year goes because again remembering if you've not watched me before I've gone from being one project at a time to eight. So Stitch Mania is still a bit of a hurdle for me. Um, yeah, anyway, that is the end of my stitching today I'm now going to talk about some books if you're not interested um, I will not be offended if you turn off now um, if you are interested it's just a couple of books um, I mentioned last week and a couple of people said yes I'd like to see so um, that's what I'm doing okay um, the book I'm currently reading and which is preventing me from reading any of these new ones yet is uh, Alison Weir's Six Tudor Queens and I'm on book two, Anne Boleyn. I believe book three is due sometime soon. When I did look it up, it had a May publication date, so I need to check that out further. Um, so she's, this is gonna be a six part series on each of Henry VIII's wives. Um, and I'm over halfway. She still hasn't married Henry. Um, and at the moment she's, I'd like to slap her, quite frankly. Um, she's a bit of a spoiled brat. Uh, I did history at school, or well, it was compulsory for some of my years, um, and, and being from a New Zealand, which is a Commonwealth country, we did a lot of the monarchy in England, um, which I was thoroughly fascinated in. And I don't, I, while I know who she is, I don't remember the nitty gritty of her. So this has been really interesting reading. Um, so, uh, I'm trying to get this finished as quick as I can um, so that I can move on to what I'm about to show you. Um, so that's Alison Weir, and as I said, it's part two. The, the first one was on Catherine of Aragon, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and then the next one will be Jane Seymour. Uh, so, um, right. Oop, it's a bit windy and there are doors slamming. Okay. Somehow or other, and I don't really know how I came to find this book. I don't know if it came up in, um, you know, on Amazon they suggest other books based on what you're looking at. So I don't know if this is what came up, um, how I found this at, at all. But I ordered this book. This is Jefferson's Children by, I won't even begin to try and pronounce their names. Now, Shannon... This fellow here is a descendant of Sally Hemings um, and this I this is a very easy read I found it very interesting talk uh, going talking to people who are descended from both um, Martha Jefferson I believe and Sally Hemings um, and the debate about whether the the official Jefferson descendants um, are having about accepting the Sally Hemings descendants. Um, as I said, this was a very easy read and it was thoroughly interesting. Um, I know, certainly from looking, I'm trying not to shake it too much because of the glare. Um, in reading this, it's quite a controversial subject for people, for some people. Um, I didn't have a problem with that at all. I, I found it thoroughly interesting and in fact, one of the legitimate... Um, I hasten to hesitate to use that word actually. Um, one of the Martha Jefferson descendants 
wrote the full foreword to this in another in another chapter in the book, um, and he said it was it's kind of ironic that the only people that have DNA ties to Thomas Jefferson so far, or the Jefferson family, because Thomas Jefferson, as far as we're aware, had no male heirs. Um, so the only people who had ties to the Jefferson family through DNA proof are the Sally Hemings side of the family, not the Martha Washington side of the family. Um, but obviously, you know, they'll have documentation and all of that sort of thing. But I just, I found it really interesting. So it sent me looking for some more books. Um, and this, this had come up several times um, by... Annette Gordon-Reed and I've I actually watched part of an interview with her on YouTube actually um, so this is the first of the two books as far as I know that she's written on the subject um, so I haven't looked into that at all yet and then this is the later book that she's written on the subject so this is more about the whole of the Hemings family not just Sally Hemings um, and it's interesting to me I mean I I don't know when I first became aware that Thomas Jefferson had an affair or had a relationship with his slave um, it was probably a few years ago um, in some thread somewhere someone made some comment and it just sort of sent me off looking um, what I discovered in reading this is that Sally Jefferson is the half-sister of Thomas Jefferson's wife, which um, was very interesting to learn. Um, anyway, so this is the second book. This is about the whole Hemings family, Sally's siblings, I guess, descendants, parents, and all of that sort of thing. Um, and then while I was looking for these books, as, as you do, I look at the other recommendations, and this book caught my eye. And this is a subject, this is something I'd never even heard of um, until I looked at this book. So this is the story of, um, okay, let's start again. George Washington, when he moved from Virginia to Philadelphia, I guess when maybe when the capital was still in Philadelphia, forgive my ignorance on American history, um, he took slaves with him, but because Philadelphia was in the north, he could only keep his slaves for six months, and then he had to free them, was the rule of the day. So what he did was that sort of five months, three weeks or whatever, he sent his slaves back to Virginia, and he got another batch of slaves, and he just churned them around like that so he didn't have to free them. One of those slaves ran away. Um, and this apparently is the story of, of them trying to catch her. Um, so that's, that's as far as I know. Um, I'm assuming that she obviously got away because there are, there's some facsimiles, um, God I'm old, there's some photographs of newspapers. So, and, and they're, um, doesn't say I thought it commented that they were they were some New England newspaper um, yeah Concord New Hampshire um, so there are interviews with the slave um, at some point once she had re-established herself she basically just up and went left, left everything that she had and went so this will be an interesting read I think um, yeah so those are my latest purchases and, and I'm itching to read but I've got to finish Anne first she needs to get married have Queen Elizabeth the first and get beheaded um, <laughs> so, <coughs> okay that's my lot there won't always be books because I'm trying not to order um, too many books because I have too many books um, I've also discovered in New Zealand um, they are going to hike up that we have a goods and service tax but it doesn't affect overseas orders under $400 from October next year. So I've got 18 months, give or take. Um, it is going to affect all orders from overseas. So um, getting these books at a good price overseas, even with shipping, is going to be a thing of the past soon. But uh, I'll make the most of it before then and then I'll stop. 
anyway that's my lot um, they've got the rest of today and tomorrow for Hawk Run Hollow then um, it's Harvest Keeper and then it is the Garden Series Club from Blackbird Design so I should have three things to show you next week and hopefully some more um, if and when I eventually read any of these books if you want to know my thoughts let me know and I'll tell you at the time um, otherwise if if it's a subject that's interesting to you I go have a look for them um, you know I think I, I like history I like true history um, so yeah anyway that's my lot I shall see you next week um, have fun with your stitch mania projects if you're doing stitch mania uh, otherwise stitch everything you want to stitch and I will catch you next week take care everyone bye bye